for some reason though i've got obviously no no clarity on this at all or any insight whatsoever so what i do have is my normal mental ramblings <laughs> Everybody, and how do you do? You do. Um, welcome to the audio files. His name is Andy. My name is. is Jan. I hear the drums echoing tonight, but she hears only whispers of some quiet conversation. She's coming in, 12 30 flight. The moonlit wings reflect the stars that guide me towards salvation. I stopped an old man along the way. Hoping to find some old forgotten words or injured melodies. He turned to me as if to say, Hurry, boy, it's waiting there for you. More than that, another time, maybe. <laughs> du, 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 du. Oh, but first, <laughs> <we're>... <laughs> I remember oh, that. But so, sometimes it's so cheesy, it's great. Or oh, great. Um, Andy, what have you got for us? I have a band called Wolf Parade. Have you heard of Wolf Parade? Okay. Do you have any of their stuff? Okay. Um, this let is me a tell track. You how it, Go ahead. Let me tell you how this works. So somebody recommended Wolf Parade to me because I liked a song called The Second Line by a band called Clinic. They said, oh, if you like that, you like this. So I got it. Absolutely bloody nothing like it whatsoever. I got Apologies to the Queen Mary, which I believe is yes. the first album. Um, there was a big noise about it at the time. Uh, not so much for me. Oh, I thought wow. the first two tracks were really decent. Um, You're a Runner and I'm My Father's Son or something like that. Mm -hmm. I really like that sort of stomping choppiness to it. It was decent. Um, and Modern World, I really liked. It's a really well-crafted like, song. And then for me, the album went downhill fast. Um there was a lot of modest mass influences, as I remember, to this. Yes. And that's as much as I recall. Okay. Well, this is off a later album, and the track is called Cloud Shadow on the Mountain. And I'd be interesting to I'd be interested to hear what you have to say about this, especially now that I know you've heard some of their earlier stuff. If this resonated with you, if not, what your thoughts are. So please go off, give it a listen. Let me know what you think, man. I was asleep in a hammock I was dreaming that I was a web I was a dream catcher Hanging in the window of a minivan Parked along the water's edge I'd say that I was all alone I'd say that I was all alone I'd say that I was all alone But I will never be born as a scorpion Okay, so that's a good start. Um, really sort of infectious thumping from the drums. Um, it's hard to remember, but I feel like the voice is slightly different. I remember from before, it was a bit more sort of um, Isaac Brock wannabe. And I think on the songs I liked, it was good. And the songs I didn't like that I heard from them, it jarred. But this isn't quite there. So that's good. Um, I really like the sort of hooky guitar and then his um, simple-minded cousin, the synth part coming in on the left as well. And they work well as a twins. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, decent. Um, decent start. Actually, when the whole band came in, I got a whiff of um, Interpol. And it just surprises me how many songs... You get a whiff of Interpol and see their influences. But, um, yeah, obviously a lot more influential than I knew. But it's just a whiff, that's all. It's not a copy or anything. 
But yeah, this is a good start. Just getting hearing more and more of that uh, synthy keyboard line. Da, 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 da. It sounded more and more like a sort of nineteen sixties TV show theme tune, sort of Jerry Anderson like. I mean, it's not Joan Linty or um, or C Captain Scarlet and the Misterons, hell no. But it's getting that way. Shadow on the plains, cloud shadow make an island nation on the fabric of this terrain. You gotta jump, jump over the island like it is hell. You gotta jump over the island like a new world, like it is hell. You will never be born as a scorpion. A couple of things. I like that sort of two note guitar with the drums echoing it. That was really nice. Um, when he was singing the little bits there, um, it sounded a bit more sort of like he's proclaiming something, which is kind of a bit. It's not, but it's a bit sort of Jim Morrison in the way he'll sort of sing certain lines, um, which I like. Um, he mentioned this, you will never be born a scorpion. I heard it before as well, um, on the few lines I got. And it immediately, and I don't know why, I don't know what he's going on about, but it just puts me in mind of the scorpion and the frog. I would have to ponder that one. But uh, yeah, it's nice atmospheric. We're at this point now where there's swirling smoke and it's about to clear and I guess going to kick off again, one hopes. But just another pair of boat shoes walking away from the harbour. Just another pair of boat shoes walking away from the harbour.
Yeah, I forgot this song's going to end. <laughs> yeah, that took four and a half minutes. That whizzed by. Whizzed by. Um, yeah, it's pretty enjoyable. I like the overall sound. Um, I think his voice grew on me a bit. Um, it was a bit sort of that. <laughs> the beginning. But um, definitely grew on me. I really liked the what the drummer was doing. It wasn't like... Yeah, there's some nice feels and stuff. But the sort of... The control of the rhythm and all the splashy stuff as well as it went back in that was really cool yeah got some odd lyrics haven't got a scooby is what it's about really i'll make some shit up and then tell andy um but to get the real deal we'll have to go back and talk to him so let's do that all right welcome back and uh what did you think of this now, your sort of second dipping of the toes into the Wolf Parade waters? Okay. So, this song opens with immediacy. Yeah. I mean, I'm That's one off. way to describe it, yeah. Uh, eager, thumping drum. And the singer who's singing something about being asleep in a hammock, um, dreaming. And being a dream catcher hanging in a minivan. Um, and uh, I reckon he reckons he was alone, whether that's important or not. We'll find out later, or maybe not. But in comes his guitar riff, which is really nice. And then a few moments later, his gimpy cousin, the synth line in the left channel. Um, mm. And together, they make quite an agreeable twosome. They work really well. Um, and there's a couple more lines, and then the whole band join in, and you get the full sound. Um, I would say at this point, um, the voice is different. It's not that pale imitation of Isaac Brock that I remember. I think I said the reaction, the songs I liked, it worked well. The songs I didn't like, I found it jarring. Um, just the way it is. But this wasn't, this was different. So whether it's a different person or it's just developed, I don't know. But anyway, um, when we get the full sound coming in, um, for a couple of lines, maybe about four sort of lines, we get this shadow of Interpol reaches out again. Um, and it's amazing. I said this in the reaction as well. It's amazing how many times I've, just, I've mentioned them. Um, and it's just incredible to me that I didn't know they were that influential, you know, and obviously the band's influenced Interpol. Uh, but this doesn't reek of Interpol, just a mere dab behind the ears, you know. Mm -hmm. but it's, it's there. <laughs> um, then we get a bit of the old vocalizing, the woo hoo hoos, woo woo hoo hoos, etc. And then he says that I catch the line, but you will never be born as a scorpion. Um, zodiac signs? I don't think so. Um, <laughs> for some reason, though, I've got obviously no no clarity on this at all or any insight whatsoever. So what I do have is my normal mental ramblings. That go off down the paddock somewhere and uh, you know, across the orchard and into into whatever field. And this one, it made me think of the frog and the scorpion. That um, um, that fable mm -hmm. that says you know some characters can can't can't refrain from harming each other, even when it's in their own interest. You know, it's in my character, as I say. And is he saying that? he or the person he's talking to can't be like that, though they're incapable of harm or that they wish to be. And they I don't know. I don't know. But that's just the, the trick of a few little synapses there. Then after that line, we get some really like fulsome drums because the, the thing keeps shifting the song and it just goes down a bit and you get these lovely drums and the riff twins come back in again and it sounds excellent. And then there's a couple more lines I caught. Just another pair of boat shoes walking away from the harbour or something. Again, ah. but boat shoes for me conjured up images of someone middle class, well off, and ineffectual. <laughs> like you know when you get those films in the eighties and nineties, if the dad or, or whoever was uh, you know was wearing boat shoes, and all yeah. that, they were pretty lame ass. And perhaps like a peach sweater hanging over the shoulders. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Khaki shorts, the whole nine. Yeah, yeah. And and of course he says just another pair, which is even worse because you're not yeah. even outstanding. You're just one of many. So there's some sort of um, disdain there of not standing out. Um, but it's interesting. It just fired off all these images straight away. Again, no idea how it fits in. So we have a nice quick drum fill 
and we're treated to more of that synth line. It's sort of, to me, I'm noticing it more, it's just slightly higher in the mix, but it's sounding more and more like something from a 60s TV theme tune, sort of Jerry Anderson type, you know, um, which were the sort of puppet, you know, Thunderbirds and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And they had some, Joe 90 had a great theme tune, twangy guitar. And um, Captain Scarlet and the Mr. Arms is one of the greatest children's theme tunes of all time. Dun, 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 dun. Anyway, but this is fitting in within that sort of genre and sounding cool. We have a bit of vocalising, which leads to the title of the song being repeated with like variants. So it talks about mountains and plains and something about islands and terrain. And then the guitar, this is where the song gets really interesting. The guitar starts ringing out this two note motif, like almost a metronome ticking. And it's echoed by the drums as well. Um, and that's really nice. And he starts uh, muttering away and um, the guitar then starts really moaning and groaning as he brings back the scorpion lines and the boat shoes lines. Um, and at this point, I don't know, it's, his voice started to grow me more and more. It wasn't terrible, no, don't get me wrong, it wasn't off, but it was just like, okay. And then it sort of grew me more as the song went on. And at this point, there's just a imperceivable bit of his voice that reminded me of, not the voice, but the way Jim Morrison would proclaim something in a song. Mm. You know? The way he goes, well, talking about you know people in the jungle or whatever, and you know salvation in the morning, things like that. Um, it's just one of those sort of deliveries. Yep, I, I can see it now. Cool. And at that point, the song, because you sort of then it's all coming down, and it's weird because I had a real impression of um, placement, like I knew I was somewhere. I couldn't tell you where that somewhere was or even what it looked like. But I did know there was a lot of smoke swirling around at ground level. And there were many sets of eyes watching us from the tree line. I don't know where I got Amy from, but it's there. And we're definitely at that catch your breath point with the song where it's all just ready to go. There's some nice drum fills. And with those drum fills and he's doing his bits, I mean, really, really good. There's an incessant ticking behind it all with this uh, hi-hat or the cymbal and it's just reminding us that we're still on the clock and then sure enough there's a few cymbal hits a bit like a kickstart on a motorcycle and then we're off into the galloping interpol like portion of that song once again and that's a really nice transition all that bit there was great there's some more sort of sing-along vocalizing and more drum fills which take us out to the end um I thought it was a decent song and it grew me more and more, especially that sort of middle and end portion worked so well. Um, I have to say the drummer was really infectious. It started off as like a pounding Mo Tucker and then did all this other stuff in between. He had real nice control, lovely use of splashes, um, created real atmosphere for the track, um, which kind of probably put me in this place, which I don't know. It might be a, like a valley or whatever. But anyway, um, it was definitely a big leap from what I heard before from them. Well, good. I'm, I'm glad you liked it. Um, and I guess, yeah, proof for everybody or every band that sometimes second chances are are a good thing. Uh, and, 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 you know, things can, people can redeem themselves, so can artists. Uh, and I'm glad that you, uh, you enjoy giving them a second go here. They are... Um, a Canadian indie rock band formed in 2003 in Montreal. Uh, they consist of Spencer Krug on vocals and keyboards and synthesizers, uh, Dan Beckner on vocals, guitar, uh, Arlen Thompson on drums, and Haji Bakara on synthesizer. Uh, the band released their uh, three full-length albums before taking a five-year hiatus in 2011. They announced their return in 2016 releasing a self-titled EP in May of that year and a fourth studio album, Cry, 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 in October of 2017. Their fifth studio album, Thin Mind, was released on January 24th, 2020. So Wolf, Wolf Parade began when former Frog Eyes member Spencer Krug was offered a gig by Grenadine Records. But with only three week a three-week deadline to form a band, 
Brug contacted a fellow Canadian guitarist, Dan Beckner, formerly of British Columbia band Atlas Strategic, and began writing song and songs in Krug's apartment. Initially using a drum machine for the rhythm section, uh, played through computer speakers, Krug later invited Arlen Thompson to the lineup as the drummer. However, the newly formed trio rehearsed as a full band only the day before their first show. So their first real rehearsal was the day before their first real show. Talk about, you know, backs against the wall there. Um, and uh, during their tour, Wolf Parade, uh, Wolf Parade recorded and released their first self-titled EP. In September of 20, uh, two, pardon me, in September of 2003, Haji Bakara joined Wolf Parade, contributing his synthesizer and sound manipulation skills to the lineup. And by the summer of uh, 2004, uh, they released uh, their second independent self-titled EP, commonly referred to as the Six Song EP. In September 2004, the band traveled to Portland, Oregon to record with Modest Mouse, I Isaac Brock. Brock had recently signed the band to Sub Pop when he was an A&R man for the label at the time. So he was out there like scouting and looking for talent. And this is yeah. one of the band. Yeah, I yeah. I had no idea that side hustle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, and he had known Beckner from his days in Atlas, Strate in Atlas Strategic uh, and who had toured with Modest Mouse uh, and were offered a sub pop signing just as the band split up. So Atlas was originally offered the 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 uh, record deal. They broke up and now this new project uh, was offered it instead. Wolf Parade spent two and a half weeks working 14 hour days in Portland after some remixing and ban the band returned to Montreal to finish recording. And on its new record label, the band released their first widely distributed EP, Wolf Parade, in July 2005. In September 2005, the band's debut album, uh, Apologies to the Queen Mary, which you referenced earlier and have heard some stuff off of, was released on Sub Pop Records to critical acclaim, earning the 2006 Polaris Music Prize nomination. Dante DeCaro, formerly of Hot Hot Heat, who we've covered on this channel, joined sometime in 2005 as a second guitarist and additional percussionist. The band's second album, At Mount Zoomer, followed in June 2008. Later that year, Bacara would leave the band to pursue an academic career in literature. Wolf Parade reconvened in 2009 to begin work on their third album, Expo 86. The album was released in June on June 29th of 2010, and features this track, Cloud Shadow on the Mountain. Wolf Parade kicked off their 2010 North American tour in Montreal. Following the tour, the band announced that it would go on that indefinite hiatus I alluded to earlier, playing uh, just a smaller number of shows in 2011. And on January 14, 2006, Wolf Parade updated their website, adding 2016, and launched new Twitter and Instagram pages indicating the band's reformation and return from hiatus. The following day, they announced a series of concert dates for later that year uh, that they would and that they would begin working on new music. So October 6, 2017, they released that album, Cry, Cry, Cry. And on February 14th, 2019, Wolf Parade announced that Dante DeCaro had decided to leave the band and that they would carry on touring as a trio. Wolf Parade released their fifth studio album, Thin Mind, on January 24th, 2020. And in April 2022, the band announced a series of shows where they would perform Apologies to the Queen Mary in its entirety. The band also con confirmed that Bacaro would return to the return for the tour, making the, his first show with Wolf Parade in 14 years. So he has returned to the band. Uh, this album, uh, the aforementioned Expo 86, received positive reviews from critics on Metacritic. Uh, the album holds a score of 75 based on 26 different uh, reviews indicating general favorability. Uh, Expo 86 was recognized by Exclaim as the number 17 pop and rock album of 2010. Exclaim writer Josh O'Kane said, Long gone are the densely layered sonic landscapes of Wolf Parade albums past. Expo 86 marks an evolution in sound, but not a change. It's Spencer Krug's Manic Pop Circus meeting Dan Beckner's Twitchy Springsteen revivalism in one sprawling album that's simultaneously more disjointed and more confident than ever. All Music, Consequence of Sound, and Sputnik each awarded the album four out of five stars. Now, let's jump into these very interesting lyrics, which I'll be quite honest with you, I don't know the direct meaning, but like you, I tried to make sense of these things that didn't make sense. And I'll, I'll touch on, on my interpretation or bits of well, my... Uh, 
it could be worth. We could be listening to a Brian Eno song. <laughs> <laughs> Musically, I would take issue with that, but yeah, lyrically, you know, lyrically, yeah, <laughs> a simpleton and stream of consciousness is what we got with that last one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was asleep in a hammock. I was dreaming that I was a web. I was a dream catcher hanging in the window of a minivan parked along the water's edge. I'd say that I was all alone. I'd say that I was all alone. I'd say that I was all alone, but I will never be born as a scorpion. You're going to be okay come morning. Find your legs and find your horns. Everybody got to be reborn, but I'll never be born as a scorpion. Everybody got to gotta be reborn, but you'll never be born as a scorpion. You're going to be okay come morning. Find your legs and find your horns because you're not just because you're not just another pair of boat shoes walking away from the harbor. Cloud shadow on the mountain, cloud shadow on the plains, cloud shadow make an island nation on the fabric of this terrain. You got to jump, jump over the island like a gazelle. You got to jump over the island like a new long legged gazelle. But you will never be born as a scorpion. You will never be born as a scorpion. Or just another pair of boat shoes walking away from the harbor. Just another pair of boat shoes walking away from the harbor. You're going to be okay come morning. Find your legs and find your horns. Everybody got to be reborn. But you will never be born as the scorpion. Everybody got to be reborn. But you will never be born as a scorpion. So one thing you thought about the scorpion and the frog. And the one thing I thought about was... He starts off like one of the first things he talks about is a web and he wakes up and he's in a hammock. So then I think a spider and we all, you know, there's tons of metaphors for like being stuck in a spider's web or the weaving of a web, almost like time or the traps we fall into during our time on earth. Um, so we always kind of fall victim to the spider and its web. But we'll never be born as the scorpion, the one natural hunter of those that weave the web. Like you'll never you'll never be higher or above or challenge physically those that have already weaved your web. Um, so it's almost like a I don't know, like a hierarchical thing. Like you'll never be above or more powerful than your fate or something to that extent. Um, that's kind of, where, and, and believe me, I know I'm all, this is not definitive and it's not like this is etched in stone anywhere. I'm just throwing shit at the wall. But when I hear this constant reference to a scorpion and one of the first things he said was about a web, I think of that dynamic, not so much the, the frog and scorpion, but there, that could be completely valid too. And your no, kind of interpretation. It isn't. It's just what, it just what triggered off. Um, yeah. I don't think, I don't think it's that at all, but um, I think you listen to you read the lyrics again. The, the thing that struck me was those first few lines uh waking up in a hammock dreaming dream catcher minivan by the water again you feel like you're in a place we may not completely describe it but you get the sense of position but it's interesting with dream catcher and some of the other words i was kept thinking about sort of native american imagery oh um, yeah obviously they were there and and like hordes and legs i don't know if that's buffalo or not um but I think like Scorpion is more like you know someone who is a bit of a you know nasty piece of work. Yeah, uh, you know. Yeah, could very to... well be. It, it, it's so. weird because they like these songs make or these lyrics make a very little more sense than the Eno one you just talked about that you just alluded to, and yet I find these lyrics so interesting because of maybe it's the delivery of it all and like the, how sure he assured he is in his sound um, or just how, like you said, evocative they are as far as yeah. correlating visuals and everything. Cause like you, I'm taking to this, like the foot of a mountain or maybe there's this lake that sits and the, the clouds pass over it like time. Um, and yeah, yeah, it is a very visual song lyrically. So I don't know. Yeah. I like the lyrics a lot, even though I don't know exactly what they mean. But Fair enough. Andres uh, Lukowski of Drowned in Sound would write of the track in his review of the album. The first track, Cloud Shadow on the Mountain, literally material materializes out of nothing. No intro, no preamble, just Krug suddenly wandering up behind you and, and nervously jabbering. I was asleep in a hammock. I was dreaming that I was a web. I was a dream catcher hanging in the window of a minivan parked along the water's edge. 
He sounds like some autistic drifter barking out his inner monologue while Arlen Thompson dryly batters the shit out of a drum in the background. As what, as what sounds like an entire different, uh, equally raucous song starts playing at the same time, later sheared into by ominous yawns of guitar, you do remember how gloriously artsy Wolf Parade can be. I just thought that was a very funny synopsis of the song. Um, Nick Freed of Consequence of Sound wrote, the album is filled with highlights, but the songs that stick out to me are the album opener, Cloud Shadow on the Mountain, lead single, What Did My Lover Say, It Always Had to Go This Way, and Four on the Floor rocker, Yulia. The opening track blasts straight into the overall immediacy and energy of the album, like a great opening track should. With driving drums and Krug's wavering chanting before exploding drums and bass takeover, Krug's lyrics are rarely easily understood, no shit, uh, and this song is no exception. Uh, he sings of boat shoes, scorpions, and shadows. You figure out how they fit together, and we just made a very poor effort in doing just that and came up short. So yeah, we're not alone. At least there's strength in numbers there, John. But yeah, um, I just love this song. I love the little melodies. I love those drums like you were talking about. I love his delivery um i don't know what it is about it but there's something to the his tone and sound that just makes me smile uh but yeah thank you for giving these guys another go and i'm glad that it was a redeeming um experience yeah i would say that um that it's just that that album that first album it just wasn't as good as all the noise that i heard about it for me right you know everything hits with everybody there's there's idiots out there who don't like Radiohead, you know, and of course they're welcome to that opinion. Um, but uh, yeah, so it wasn't that it was terrible. It's just it wasn't you know, from my you know point of view, it was as good as everyone else was making out. But that that's just yeah. Funny. And sometimes the hype kills it too, because like if it had none of that hype and maybe you listened to it, those few yeah, songs you really would have liked even more. Um, and it yeah. would have been let they would have been less undercut by the, the ones you didn't because the whole album had been hyped going into the listening session and yeah. you know kind of handicapped the experience, so to speak. So, well, thank you so much for giving this a listen, guys out there in the listening audience. Let us know what you think of Wolf Parade in this track. Um, if you were reminded of anything, uh, you know, any other artists or, or what have you, please feel free to drop them down below. If you've got any other suggestions by this band or whatever other band, also feel free to drop that down below. And also, while we have your attention, please, if you haven't, like, share, and subscribe. Any number of those things, any combination of those three or all of them would be a great help to the channel, and we would greatly appreciate it. Uh, all that out of the way, hopefully John and I will see all y'all in growing numbers on the next installment of the audio files. See you later, guys.